Hey, you guys from New Plastic, and today we're diving deeper and deeper into Redshift to create this beautiful and fully procedural alien rock material. And you guessed it, I added a Redshift version to my alien rock material pack on my Gumroad. 18 fully procedural, infinitely tileable, beautifully unique Redshift materials. The Octane version has been around for over a year, but now you can finally get it for Redshift as well. If you feel like you need it, go buy it. It's a great way to support the channel. Another great way to support the channel is buying prints and pins I made on my Pink Eye Gumroad, so check that out as well. And consider supporting on Patreon or membership, where you can watch these videos with no ads, get access to these project files, get free products from the store, and other cool perks, but most mostly help me make more and better content for y'all. Follow me on Instagram at ojang or the channel at brand new plastic. Join our discord, subscribe, get those eight hours of sleep. Let's go. Okay, so I have this simple rock model here. I have this sunlight object coming from the side and slightly from the back for some harsh shadows. And I have this very weak HDRI for some subtle ambient lighting. I still want to keep the shadows very black for the drama and the outer space look. So the HDRI is very, very subtle. Also, I have a camera with the focal length set right here, aperture at 12 and bokeh turned on and at 80 millimeter focal length. Okay, let's add a standard material and let's start with the displacement system. So I'll add a max on noise, scale it way up. Everything else can stay the same. Let's change type to FBM up the octaves for some extra detail and everything else is fine. Let's add a color layer node, plug the noise to the base layer and add a ramp node to it. Let's turn off layer one for now and let's make the ramp go from very dark gray to dark gray. Something like this. Cool, let's create those large chunks. I'll add another noise, change type to displaced Voronoi up the gain a bit to reduce the contrast on the details, lower exponent a bit to make the shape a bit sharper, scale it up to your liking, and let's flip the high and low clip to invert it, something like this, maybe up the lacunarity a bit to make the shapes less distorted, and lower octaves for a bit less detail. Okay, let's plug it into layer 2 mask through a ramp node, turn on layer 2, and really, really choked the ramp to make the mask very sharp. So now I'll use the same noise and plug it into the layer two color using a scalar ramp. So we're using the noise choked up as a mask on itself. And with the scalar ramp, I can have a bit of a better control over the contour of the chunks, which will dictate the shape they're extruding outwards. So you can see this way, we're getting this dark ring around each chunk, which will carve into the rock before it's being extruded out. Just a little detail that helps it look more active and rough. And by moving the notches of the mask ramp, I can expose more or less of those rings. We don't need a lot though, because we're gonna add another extra detail. I'll duplicate this ramp, plug the same noise into it and plug it into layer one mask. Then plug the first noise into layer one color using a ramp node. Turn layer one on and let's make this ramp a bit brighter. And now if we bring the notches of the mask ramp more to the left, we're exposing more of this layer and we start to get these brighter rings around the chunks, which will kind of push the surface up a bit, then carve into it and then push out the chunks. Again, just subtle details that will help the chunk feel like they burst out of the surface. Maybe make this ramp slightly darker and let's actually see how it's looking. So I'll plug the color layer into a displacement node and into the displacement channel. And for it to work, we need to add a redshift tag to the model and turn on the tessellation and displacement. And there you go. Let's turn off the bokeh for now, just so everything is in focus. So if I zoom in, you can see these subtle bulges around these chunks. And we can make them a bit stronger by exposing more of the mask. Yeah, there you go. That's nice. The displacement is a bit low res for now, but that's okay. We'll turn it up later. Okay, let's move all these here. Control command G to group the scaffold. And let's name it and color it. Gotta stay organized, you know? Okay, let's give this whole thing some color. I'll add a max on noise, add a color layer, and plug the noise to the base layer using a ramp node. Let's turn off layer one for now. Scale up the noise. Change type to FBM. 
up the octaves, up low clip, and lower brightness just a tiny bit to expose more of the black areas. And let's use this ramp to colorize this noise. I want to keep these colors pretty unsaturated and gray, but you do you. Some cool tones like this. Okay, now I'll use the noise of the larger chunks as the mask of layer one. And if we turn it on, you can see it's now black wherever the chunks are. Let's add a ramp node to it and choke it and plug this first noise into layer one color using a ramp node and give it some complementary colors like reddish, orangish. Nice. Let's duplicate this noise and use it as layer two. Turn it on. Let's change noise type to fire really choke the low and high clip and up the cycles. So we're getting these swirls. Yeah, nice. Choke it even more. Cool, and let's add a color node to layer two color. And choose some kind of a goldish color. And let's see how we're looking. Okay, not bad. Let's adjust the chunks mask to align the colors better with the actual extrusion of the chunks. And let's plug the swirly noise to the metalness channel. So all these swirls will be metallic. Yeah, that's sick. Maybe adjust the color to make it feel a bit more goldish. Doesn't really matter though. Okay, let's scaffold all these and call it color. Let's plug this chunk mask ramp into the subsurface scattering weight channel. So now all these chunks have some SSS. And let's use this whole color system as the SSS color. And it's a bit too intense now, so let's bring down the SSS scale to like 0.2. This scale depends on your model scale, so feel free to play with it. The lower it is, the less deep the light will penetrate. And let's add a color to the radius. Cool, looking good. Let's add another color layer node. And plug this first noise here into the base layer. Then plug this noise into layer one color using a ramp node. Let's solo this thing. Okay, let's change blend mode of layer one to something like exclusion. You can try different blend modes and play with the ramp colors just to get some kind of a complex layered look. Let's plug this whole thing into a ramp node and into the roughness channel. Invert the notches and make it go from very light gray to a darker gray. We want to keep this bright to get a rough reflection. Duplicate this ramp, plug the color layer into it, invert notches, and maybe make the dark notch a bit brighter. And plug it into the reflection weight channel. And let's add a bump node and plug this whole thing into it and into the bump channel. Okay, the bump is a bit too uniform. Let's add a ramp node here and choke the notches just to get more of a chunky look. That's much better. We can lower bump height. Okay, yeah, we're looking really good. The flat surfaces are a bit too flat, so let's add a bit more wonkiness on the displacement channel. Make this notch of the first ramp brighter to push these areas out a bit more. That's better. Let's look at other angles. And to get more resolution on the displacement, I'll go to the redshift tag and reduce the minimum edge length in the tessellation. It'll take a bit longer to initialize the render, so that's why we don't want to do it in the beginning. Mm, add a bit more detail to the chunks. That's better. Maybe reduce the contrast on the first noise just a bit. Let's adjust the chunks mask and contour a bit. Hmm, so there's these artifacts on the chunks, like the rock surface is still covering some of them even though they're masked out. I can try and adjust a color mask, but it won't really help. It's some kind of an issue with the surface being displaced and kind of misaligning with the color. If I increase the displacement height, you can see it's getting worse. And actually, I'll bring the minimum edge length up for now, just for faster refresh. Okay, so yeah, it's a bit tricky to fix this, but playing with the minimum and maximum range in the displacement node can help. 
It's basically changing the middle point of the displacement and can help with the misalignment. So yeah, negative 0.35 to negative 0.5 almost completely fixed it. Nice, it's not a perfect solution. You'll still get some glitches and artifacts, but you just gotta tweak around until you're reducing them as much as you can. Okay, let's just adjust these chunks a bit more. Nice. Yes. Looks fucking awesome. What else? Let's actually make the gold swirls bump out a little. So I'll plug the swirly noise into this color layers layer two color. Change blend mode to add and bring opacity down a bit. And we should invert the ramp notches so the swirls are white. Roughness ramp looks right. And specular too. Yep, looks really, really, really nice. Maybe bring the bump height down slightly. Okay. So I actually went back to this and I wanted to add a couple more things. So first I'll add a noise here. Change type to displace Voronoi. Scale it up a bit. Maybe up the octaves and lacunarity for some extra detail. And I'll make the black more of a gray and now i'll plug this noise into the color 2 channel of this other noise basically replacing the white parts of this noise with the voronoi pattern and maybe make the gray a bit lighter so yeah we're just breaking up this noise with a smaller pattern and lastly i wanted to add a curvature node to the color layer to break up the color on the edges of the surface so i'll plug a curvature node to layer 3 color in the color system and let's see how it's looking Okay, so first let's bring down the radius, which will make it spread less, but will make the effect stronger. And I just made a render region for faster previews. Okay, so let's bring radius down even more, like 0.05. And in the remap tab, up the output range minimum to 0.5, now 0.25, and more importantly, the max to two. So the effect will be even stronger. Yeah, we can actually just put minimum to zero. Yeah, that's good. And lastly, let's plug this noise into the layer 3 mask to break up the curvature. Yeah, there you go. Maybe change the blend mode to screen to make it a bit more subtle. But yeah, that looks great. That's it. Man, we're actually doing it, huh? We're just grabbing Redshift by its procedural balls. Hope you learned something. You can get this material along with 17 other ones in the Alien Rocks pack on my Gumroad or get access to these project files on my Patreon. So consider supporting on Patreon or membership because you know I wouldn't have been able to make these videos without the help of these twinkling stars on my Patreon and membership. So let's all give them a big round of applause. I love you. Have a great day. Peace.